I, I came home in 2017 and uh... John, you're like the main leader of Ramesh Johnson. <laughs> I wanted to better myself. You know, I was, I was ready to hire motivational speakers and, you know, just hit the fitness industry running. And... Okay, you starting? Good morning, this is John Humphrey and uh, it's uh, Testimony Tuesday and you know, make a difference, change people, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't like pure heart, it, it was more lust for, for money, power. You know, as far as exciting testimonies with all kinds of stuff going on, uh, basically, uh, you know, throughout my whole life that I was a drug dealer, everywhere I went, people knew who I was because I spent lots of money. So. I, I was still looking at life like that, even though I was changing. I, I wasn't changing in here. It was only that. But the bottom line is, is that sin kills, sin brings death. Christ is the solution to that sin. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. Eyes picked to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should've seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger. In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know what? Went back to selling, six time failing. I went back to prison, got my head right, got my bread right. Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe. Trying to do right, I got a mission. Trying to give back to my boys in the prison. The old me's gone, I ain't never. So I was raised, uh, I was blessed by having Christian parents, I was in a family of seven, grew up in a you know, middle class uh, neighborhood home, uh, had good friends, uh, was well protected, safe. I still needed Christ and I still came to know him, I actually came to know him at a very young, a young age because I was taught biblical truth. Uh, one of the churches we attended in Denver was a Berean church, if you know anything about the Bereans. Uh, whenever somebody preached, everybody had their Bible open to make sure the preacher knew what he was talking about and that he was staying with the Word. So that was a great way. In, in high school, I did the topical memory system through navigators. They still have it. Uh, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, Psalms 119.11. That really does matter. And the verses I learned in junior high and high school have helped me all my life. I'll be 71 uh, next month. and so. Uh, those verses have come to my mind and my heart when, when I needed them. So uh, I, I was involved in ministry. I thought I was going to go into full-time ministry. Uh, that, that just didn't happen. I wasn't really sure what to do. There's, everybody's got all kinds of different uh, stories. The, the tempter's always working to destroy you. I ended up uh, becoming a cop. When I came to Phoenix, my brother was here. He asked me. I figured, ah, that'd be a good idea. I'll do the police academy. I'll be good training. That would be kind of cool for a couple years. <laughs> well, I did it for 33. The last 16, I was a lieutenant. Uh, the Lord used it uh, in, in wonderful ways. Believe it or not, I don't care what they say about cops. Almost all the cops I met were people that were willing to help people lay their down, lives down for people. Uh, and so uh, uh, don't watch the news, don't listen to it. The only thing they focus on is the, what's bad and the, the, the worst of the worst, instead of, uh, the, there's just people every day out there serving you, whether they're policemen, firemen, or whatever. But the key to both of it, there's Christian policemen, there's Christian firemen, and so, and they have a fellowship in both, and they have a Bible study in both. And so, uh, I would just encourage you, number one, be, at, be in a good church every Sunday, be there. And uh, every time that door opens, be there. Have a pastor that, preaches the word and if, if you have any questions ask them and if they're not preaching the word you got to pray about finding a church that is and then from there 
you're going to find somebody, if you are new in the faith, find somebody to uh, disciple you, to teach you, help you to grow in the faith with solid. I, I am the most conservative, uh, historic, orthodox guy uh, because that's where the foundation is. It's not uh, out here in Never Never Land. It's not out here in Make Believe World. It's the real everyday boots on the ground, feet in shoe leather, open the word, know the word, live the word. And so uh, it's, it's wonderful. I, uh, I had some great people that mentored and taught me over the years. Uh, my greatest weaknesses in life is when I wasn't in a church on a regular basis and I didn't have somebody uh, holding me accountable and saying, hey, uh, uh, you know, you might be getting a little bit off center here. So anyway, I want to encourage you all to, uh, everybody has a testimony. The testimony is that Christ was on the cross dying for them. The, the wrath of God is poured out on him. All your sin is poured out on him. So seek him. The man I read earlier today, uh, John Owens, he, he had a tremendous upbringing, tremendous education. He was, uh, he'd study 20 hours a day, but it, it, it took him a while before he really knew he was saved. And the cool thing is he was here, he was gonna hear a real famous preacher. The guy wasn't there that day. And a guy that he could never figure out who he was preached, and that's when he knew that he knew Christ. And that's when he knew Christ saved him. And it's just like in Julio's situation, we talked over about a four and a half year period and then he knew it, and then I knew it because he called and said, hey, I'm ready. And he's been ready, and you can see the results. So God bless all of you, and uh, stay in the Word, find a good church. Send those questions to Ron to Strong. And look, I'm gonna just tell you this one last thing. Every question you have has been already asked and answered throughout church history. There's nothing new under the sun. It's already been there. Unfortunately, each generation tries to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to. It's already there. I don't care what it is. I don't care how difficult it is, whether it's the death of somebody, a terrible relationship, a divorce, children that have gone astray. All of those things are there. Our hope is in Christ. You individually spend your time with the Lord. He's your Savior. And then you go out and do what He asks you to do because you have gifts and talents He's given you. So God bless you and have a great day. I, I came home in 2017 and uh... I wanted to better myself. You know, I was I was ready to hire motivational speakers and you know just hit the fitness industry, running and you know make a difference, change people. But it, it wasn't it wasn't like pure hearted. It, it was more lust for for money, power. Uh, you know, throughout my whole life that I was a drug dealer. Everywhere I went, people knew who I was because I spent lots of money. So. I, I was still looking at life like that, even though I was changing, I, I wasn't changing in here. It was only the outside part. I met John through college. I went to go sign up for one class. I was gonna start trying to get credits. And the, the lady at the front convinced me to take a class that you, the, People that take this class are usually want people that want to be law enforcement, lawyers, uh, you know, it's criminal justice. So in my head, I was like, why would I want to take a class with a bunch of cops? You know, but for some reason in my heart, I felt the love that lady was like, trying to help me with that day. And I gave in and I said, okay, so sign me up. And that's, that's where I met John. You guys have heard the story about me waiting in front for him and all that stuff. but. I believe that the, the biggest and most powerful story is that he waited and prayed for me for four years. And you guys, you guys might think that prayer is not <laughs> powerful. You're, you're, you're very wrong. Um, prayer is very, very powerful. And you know, it, it's funny because people want miracles, but they don't want to pray. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You know, you have to believe, you have to pray, you have to have faith, and then you'll see those miracles. And guess what? You're seeing one right here. Because my heart has completely changed. And now my life is completely dedicated to serving Him and getting His Word and just telling people the gospel, the truth. My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. 
I'll catch you guys on the rebound.